Well, it seems like the injuries are going to carry on, guys, for Newcastle United with the reports this morning and the photos that there is no Joe Willock in training. So we'll have a look at that. Sean Longstaff as well has come out in an interview and said that he's been barely fit all season. Can you actually believe that? I guess so the way he's played, but still, that needs looking into seriously. Uh, we're also in a battle uh, with uh, Juventus for a goalkeeper. Still no official word on Joe Linton and... Uh, could we be in a battle with Bayern Munich for a 17-year-old wonder kid? Let's take a look at it all on the Daily News. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. My name is Paul. Thank you very much for watching the Toon Review. As usual, if you do enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up. Very important to the channel that we keep those coming in so the fellow fans like yourselves can find us in the YouTube searches. And also, if you are new, please do subscribe. It is free to do so on the way to 29,000 subscribers. With your help, we can get there sooner rather than later. Don't forget to hit the notification bell, which will also notify you when we schedule our live shows or we upload any videos such as the daily news and things like that. So thank you very much for all that. Uh, first of all, apologies for last night that we couldn't bring you the live How We're The Lasses show. Um, we use a streaming service uh, that links up with YouTube and unfortunately they had technical issues right before we went live yesterday. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, by the time we, we kept trying and trying for an hour, uh, but unfortunately it wasn't to happen those are solved now so we will be back tonight with of course the Tottenham preview live at seven right uh, let's talk about Joe Willock first and as usual uh, some very bizarre stuff is going on with Newcastle United behind the scenes regarding injuries uh, that's the main crux of the news this morning obviously with with Willock first and then Longstaff now Joe Willock came off after 40 minutes against Fulham uh, he did take a bit of a, a nasty tackle. Uh, however, that seemed like it's not, it's not nothing really to do with it. Uh, Eddie Howe confirming after the game that it is an Achilles problem which has been going on for some time, according to Eddie Howe. Now, this will again anger a lot of Newcastle United fans uh, because of the situation with injuries this season, the way it's gone, playing injured players all the time, wondering what the hell is going on when they break down after a few minutes into the game. Now, it's clear to me uh, the Willock hasn't been fit due to his performances. Uh, he's been very poor since he came back from his latest injury and is clearly not fit. Um, now, he hasn't been seen in training photos or in any training this week uh, and is expected to be a massive doubt for the game against Tottenham on Saturday, which is, of course, another horrible lunchtime kickoff, which we don't really like, but it's happening again at St. James's Park, 12.30 kickoff. Live coverage begins on uh, 12 noon right here on the Toon Review, so don't miss that for Match Day Live. Uh, I just find it astounding, guys. The amount of players that um, we're now finding out haven't been fit. Uh, and, uh, you know, Joe Willock is another one that's now gone down injured. Uh, probably won't be back for a few weeks. We know that Achilles injuries you've got to be very, very careful with. And Newcastle United, for me, have not been careful with these injuries this season. They just have not been careful. They've been very... I, I don't know. It seems like to, bordering on unprofessional. You know, the amount of things that we've seen go wrong. But Newcastle United have actually, you know, said in the last couple of weeks that they are going to do something about it. They're going to look into it during the summer, which I think has to be done because, you know, Joe Willock is a vital cog in the midfield for us. Uh, certainly when you lose the likes of Tenali, etc., he's a vital player. And when he's on song and playing well, he's almost unstoppable. Driving us forward on that left-hand side is, you know, he's a huge miss for us. Uh, and, you know, we hope he's back to full fitness very shortly. But again, it's another one of those where the manager's accepted that he's been struggling for quite some time. And basically, we move straight on to another player who hasn't been fit. Uh, Sean Longstaff has been interviewed and has admitted that he's barely been fit all season. Now, we know that Sean Longstaff has, has not had the greatest of seasons. He's took a lot of criticism on this channel and, you know, across the board with Newcastle United fans. He clearly hasn't been playing very well. And um, I, I don't know whether he's come out and said this just to, uh, you know, shut people up, you know, understand that he's been playing with an injury, etc. That's why he's probably not at full tilt. Uh, that's fine. My problem is, and I think a lot of Newcastle fans' problem is, he shouldn't have been in the starting lineup when he's injured. And you know what? fine if we haven't got senior players there to cover for him then bring in the youngsters why are you playing an injured player when it's only going to get worse now Longstaff admitted that he basically broke his ankle in that game at Everton last season we know we, we can remember the tackle it was an awful tackle um and he's basically said that he broke his ankle and 
what worried me was he said it was a 10 week recovery period that he was told initially and he was back in four four that that's that's a problem right there surely you know six weeks ahead of schedule and what sean longstaff calls basically a broken foot it's it, it's mental it's mental when you see what's going on with this club this season with regards to injuries and nothing seems to be getting any better you know, lessons are not being learned. And I can only hope that when things are done in the summer, things are done properly. And this is all I doubt. So everybody is on the same hymn sheet when it comes to injuries. And there's, you know, a couple of people that they listen to and they go with that decision. They don't go to five or six different people asking for opinions and then come up with, oh, we'll, we'll meet in the middle somewhere because it doesn't work. It simply does not work. And it's had an a real bad effect on Sean. He hasn't played well all season. And this is probably why, guys. Sean is a better player than what he's shown us. You know, whether you like that comment or not, he has been a lot better than what he's played this season. Last season, he was a very important part of that midfield. And he played well. There's no doubt about that. But this season, rank. Absolutely rank. And now we're seeing the reasons why he's absolutely rank. Um... What he said was he was worried about losing his place uh, when we signed Sandro Tonali. Now, that's understandable. As a player, you're going to worry that when you bring in a you know a 40 million quid uh, player or whatever he was, that's going to cause a lot of worry when you're already at the club. So Sean's basically thinking, I need to be in this team. I need to be, I need to be fit. I need to be there and I need to be challenging. Uh, however, um, this is what Sean also said. It was a 10-week ankle injury and I came back in four. It's hard enough playing with one bad foot, but when you've got a left foot that's sore and a right ankle that doesn't move properly, it's never going to be the easiest, uh, especially at this level. Uh, it is what it is. I'll always put the team ahead of myself and people will either see that and appreciate it or they won't. Now, I appreciate where Sean's coming from there. Putting the club before himself, that's fine. But what is the manager and the, the rest of the staff doing when they know Sean is literally crippled with an injury here and he plays 90 minutes constantly. I find that astounding. I really find that astounding. You know, credit to Sean because he wants to battle on, right? And we've seen that with various players this season that they want to battle on and do really well. But when it comes to this kind of thing, I'm sorry, it does not work anymore. You cannot play at the level that we expect Sean to be at and Newcastle United to be at when, you know, you can't move properly. How is he starting and playing 90 minutes when he's admitting that he's he's just knackered? It, it, it's beyond belief. And I don't want to hear people saying, well, we've got no other players. We've got kids. And I'm sorry, the likes of Joe White, etc. can do a better job than Longstaff, who can hardly move around on the pitch. It, I, I, I just don't get it. And... and I'm I'm pleased he puts the team ahead of himself. I, I, I you know I like that kind of attitude, but at the same time, somebody has surely got to step in and say, "Look, Sean, you need some time out, mate. You are absolutely knackered. You're going to risk further injury in the future by playing on this ankle constantly. And when you've got a, a, another ankle that's sore as well as the one he's injured, my God." It explains a lot. It really does. But you have to look at the staff here and say, "What are they advising?" Because players, I'm sorry, but players should not be in the situation where they say, right, I'm crippled, but I'm going to play. Because we've seen it doesn't work with Sean. He's been terrible this season, and maybe we see why now. It, it's, it's, it's utterly bizarre what, what the thinking is behind the scenes with this football club at the minute. It really is. Uh, a little quick update now, uh, guys, on the Joe Linton situation. As we know, uh, yesterday we, we found out that Joe Linton had agreed or verbally agreed to a new four-year deal with Newcastle United. Um, Fabrizio Romano has again come out and tweeted this morning that uh, Newcastle United have done really, really well uh, by getting this new contract over the line, given where they are. Joe Linton's um, rise to being one of the best midfielders uh, in the Premier League. There's no doubt about that to, to what he does. In, in his position. Um, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful contract to get Joe Linton under. Uh, but there is still no official announcement from the club, guys, as I record this anyway. Um, there may be uh, a pressure on the club to, you know, come out and say, yes, he signed a new contract. Uh, but they, you know, we've seen this with signings and new contract announcements over time. They will announce it when they are ready. Um, 
from what all the media is saying, all the, the, the big reporters in the industry, they're all saying that this contract is done. Um, it's just a case of Newcastle United coming out and uh, letting us all know. So I'm not particularly worried at all that there's no official announcement yet from the club because I think it's done and dusted. Um, you know, there's, it's not just uh, the... the, the the lesser media outlets, uh, you know, reporting this. This is the big boys and who know they're in with the the clubs and things like that. So I'm I'm, not, I'm under no um, worry at all that this is going to happen. It's just a case of when Newcastle United are ready to announce it. But uh, no problem so far with the four year deal for Joe Linton. Moving on to some transfer news now, and it seems that Newcastle United are still being linked with signing a goalkeeper in the summer. Uh, the latest one to be linked is uh, Philip Jorgensen. He currently plays for Villarreal in Spain. Um, now, Juventus have put on their own website that they're willing to battle Newcastle United for this goalkeeper's signature. Uh, there's nothing in the website or any reports about a transfer fee or uh, contract or availability of the player. It seems like Newcastle United have watched him for a while, but according to Juve's website, which I've just read this morning, um, they are very interested in, and it does actually quote, battling Newcastle United for the goalkeeper's signature. Now, Villarreal are a, a very interesting team in Spain. They, they, they always seem to churn out some very, very good players. Um We've been linked to many different goalkeepers in the last few weeks, you know, your, um, your Ramsdales, etc. But at the minute, uh, there's certainly nothing concrete about Newcastle United going for a goalkeeper. I get the feeling, though, I get the feeling, and this is just my opinion, I just think they're worried about Nick Pope. I think Newcastle United are worried about Nick Pope's fitness because of this shoulder injury. Uh, obviously, it's taken a long, long time to recover from. This is the second time in his career that he's had this injury. And I just think they might think that his movement or agility might not be what it was when he comes back. Um, there is a lot of Newcastle United fans who do, do genuinely think that we need a new goalkeeper anyway. Uh, I have a feeling Dubravka will be moved on in the summer along with Karius. Uh, so we do need uh, a goalkeeper to come in to battle Nick Pope for the number one position. But you have to remember, trying to get a, an absolute quality goalkeeper to come in, they're going to want number one. They are going to be wanting to be number one. And that is something that Newcastle United have to negotiate, you know, and say, well, we've got a number one here. Uh, what goalkeeper is going to like to come in, not knowing that he's going to be number one and has been told, well, you've got to challenge our current number one. It's 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 it's, it's a very, very difficult situation for any any goalkeeper and for Newcastle United to try and negotiate uh, a, a deal to get it over the line. You know, we, we have to be very careful. Uh, but, I mean, Philip Jorgensen is a new name, certainly out of the hat. Um, given the goalkeepers that we've already been linked with, but would you, would you would you think we need a new goalkeeper? Would you be happy with Nick Pope next season, or is it a case of seeing how he comes back in the summer in in pre season? What his movements like? Has he made a full recovery from this shoulder injury? And is it a, is it a necessity to bring in another world worldy of a goalkeeper, or would you be happy just bringing in a reserve one? It's a very difficult situation for Newcastle to be in right now, but uh, let me know what you think. And finally, there is very much a wonder kid on the radar for Newcastle United. His name is Asan Cudrago, and, uh, or Udrago, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, currently playing for Schalke in Bundesliga 2. Um, he's an attacking midfielder, 17-year-old, and he is expected to be the next wonder kid out of Germany. Now, of course, Bayern Munich are sniffing around this kid as well, so that makes it very, very difficult for Newcastle United to try and even make any sort of approach. You know, if, you, if you're a young German kid, Bayern Munich, like it is in France with PSG, Bayern Munich are the pinnacle of football teams. However, that's starting to change a little bit in Germany now with the rise of Leverkusen, etc. You know, it's, it's not a straightforward league anymore for Bayern Munich. Uh, there's a lot of clubs signing good players, bringing a lot of good players through the academies in Germany. And this seems to be the same sort of thing when, uh, with regards to uh, Germans' wonder kids. Schalke... They've had a fall from grace, we know that. It used to be a, a competitive Bundesliga team. They've got relegated. They've had the problems over the years. But again, they do have good academies over there in Germany and can churn out players. Now, he's played 14 times already this season um, for Schalke in, in Bundesliga 2. Two goals and two assists. Um, but Bayern Munich are very, very interested. And I, I state that another time because, you know, where we want to be, as that elite football club, wherever you want to see us, we are going to have to challenge the likes of Bayern Munich, etc. for these wonder kids. Now, what the uh, the headline said was, uh, 
sorted for years for Newcastle United if we get this guy in to play alongside Lewis Miley. We have two of the top wonder kids across Europe, um, which is brilliant for Lewis Miley that he's been thought in, in that ilk as well. So, um, yeah, we, we're definitely on the radar for him. But I, I guess when you're going against Bayern Munich, uh, that makes very, very difficult negotiations to be had because Bayern Munich have a lot of money. They can pay a lot of wages. Um, and, of course, we're in a situation where we don't know yet uh, whether this luxury tax thing, uh, it looks to have been poo-pooed now. It looks to be sunk deeper than the Titanic. But you never know. It may come back on the table. But at the moment, Newcastle will be stretched again by FFP. So we'll have to wait and see. But uh, listen... This, this wonder kid, I've seen him a couple of times actually for Schalke. Um, brilliant. He is brilliant. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but whether we can challenge Bayern Munich is another thing. Uh, but there you go, guys. That is the news for today. Thank you so much again for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to give it that thumbs up, guys. Keep people coming to the channel in the search results and hopefully uh, subscribe and like yourselves. Uh, and also, if you are new and you like what you see, please do subscribe. Free to do so. Uh, but also, don't forget to hit that notification bell, which will inform you of any uploads like this or when we schedule in our live shows, which is practically most nights a week, as long as we don't have technical difficulties with our streaming services. Uh, but if you're watching this on Thursday, we are back tonight, 7 o'clock, with the preview for Newcastle United against Tottenham. Uh, a huge game at St James's Park with a lunchtime kickoff. Tottenham pushing for the Champions League, of course. Newcastle need to keep the points rolling in in their bid to qualify for Europe next season. So it should be a cracking show. We'll go through potential lineups, tactics, formations, and of course, score predictions. So join us at 7 for that. But in the meantime, have a wonderful Thursday, guys, and we'll see you soon. Take care.